Energy. What is energy? Light. Well, that's a type of energy we use all the time. Through outside all day long, we get light from the sun. Plants can turn sunlight into useful energy which makes them grow. Food gives energy to animals and humans so they can live. Almost anything that moves can be used to create energy, enough to run machines and turn on the light. Energy from the sun can generate electricity using solar panels. We can also use wind for motion energy. How about water? We need to drink it every day for our energy. Water's movement in rivers and dams also produces energy. There are so many amazing and creative ways we can create the energy that comes through wires into your home, often from far, far away. Wait, what is energy good for? Television, air conditioning, video games, toasters, showers, computers, washing machines, microwaves, fridges, cars, fireplaces, making paper, and plastic bottles. Well, it's too bad that some people use way, way too much energy. Do you know that we could run out? Yep, the power could go out. Oops, so what can we do? Actually, there's so much you can do, and it's easy. You want to know how? Watch our other video, How to Save Energy! For this experiment, you will need a cake pan and an old vase from your mom's kitchen cupboard. The cake pan is used to catch the awesome mess you are about to make. You will need a tablespoon to use to measure out your baking soda width. Put about four tablespoons of baking soda in your vase. There is no real need to measure out exactly four tablespoons of baking soda. Heaping your tablespoons will actually help make your explosion bigger and better. Oh, and don't forget to make sure you're using baking soda and not baking powder. Next, pick your favorite color of food coloring. I chose green and put about six to eight drops in my vase. I also used glitter to give my explosion a little sparkle. I chose another one of my favorite colors, pink, and added another heaping tablespoon to my vase. Now, here comes the fun part. Use your white vinegar and one measuring cup. Make sure you have your mom and dad help you with this part because it can get pretty messy and pretty stinky. Fill up your measuring cup with your vinegar and pour it in the vase and let the magic begin. This explosion happens because of the chemical reaction. The baking soda is a base while the vinegar is an acid. When mixed together, they become unstable and instantly break apart into carbon dioxide and water. This creates all the fizzing. After your explosion fizzles out, make sure to help your mom and dad clean up your mess. For this experiment, you will need to place your mason jar on a flat surface, like your kitchen table or your counter. Next, take your soda and pour it into your jar up to about where my finger is at, three-fourths of the way. Then, take your box of raisins, open them, and pour about six to eight into your soda. Now. Let me explain how and why the raisins are dancing. The raisins are more dense than the soda, so at first they sink to the bottom of the jar. The soda releases the carbon dioxide bubbles. When these bubbles stick to the raisins, they lift because of the increase in buoyancy. When the raisins reach the surface, 
the bubbles pop, and the carbon dioxide escapes into the air. This causes the raisins to lose buoyancy and sink. The rising and sinking continues until the soda loses carbon dioxide and goes flat. Now, we'll do the same experiment that we just did, but this time, we'll just use plain tap water. Fill your jar up about three-fourths of the way with your tap water, just like you did with your soda. Next, take your raisins and pour about six to eight in the water and watch. The raisins do not dance because the water does not contain carbon dioxide like the soda did. 